Hey everyone, Beesman coming at ya. And today I wanted to dive into something new that was added to Steam VR, which is called the Interaction System. And I don't see a lot of people talking about it, so I figured I might as well make a video on it. So, let me jump into VR right here, and we see right off the bat a few different stations that show off various interactions you can do. But to kick things off, I figured let's jump into the longbow. So, as you can see here, this is the longbow that's provided as part of the lab. And I can go here, set the arrow on fire, and boom! Sets that target on fire, and we should be getting a blue right there. Pop. So, the neat part about this is that it's all provided within Unity, and so you can use this to make your own longbow game, you can use this for a bunch of these different features like teleportation in your own game. So I think that's so cool, and now it's just native as part of Steam VR. So, let's see how we can use this. Alright, so now that I'm out of VR, let's go ahead and see how we can actually use this. So as you can see here, I have the asset store open, and I've just gone ahead and downloaded Steam VR, and that's really all you need for this. So that's the really cool part about this. It's all native to the Steam VR plugin, and you get all of those benefits. Next, I'm going to go ahead and open up Steam VR, and then there's this interaction system folder, and then there's all of the scripts are here. But what I'm going to first do is go ahead and open up the PDF on how you can actually use it. So as you can see, it's the interaction system from the lab, so this is exactly what they used in the lab, and they also have added in some more cases that the goal for them is really for it to be a good starting point, basically to build your own interactions really seamlessly. So, I mean, they have a get started here, and we'll go through this in our own scene. And basically what I kind of want to do is show you guys like how you can use the player prefab and then also just add some pretty intuitive teleportation to this. So they have that and then they have their sample scene which we just saw with Longbow and then they have all of their documentation on how to use it. So I think compared to the rest of SteamVR it's actually pretty well documented which is kind of nice. And so with that out of the way, let's just kind of dive into first where you can find that sample. So if you go to samples, if you go to scene, and interaction example. So I'm going to go ahead, dock my game here. And then the other really cool thing that I, I found with this is that they have this like 2D debug mode, which I, may, I, I generally don't recommend using something like this, but I think for the purposes of this video, it's actually kind of nice. Um, so, I mean, it's just like, first person FPS style WASD and then right click to rotate the camera and left click here is to kind of simulate a hand so I mean they have their own UI system so this is like you can point at it and then click for certain things to happen I don't think those buttons are hooked up they have throwable objects in here so I can left click drag and then toss them off and like I said, this is a horrible way to actually test your game, like you should really be going into the vibe, but I think for since this is coming out as a 2D video anyways, like it comes out kind of nicely to show, one, you can do some quick testing with this, and then two, like you also get that ability to have all of these features natively integrated for you. So they also have this interactable object, so you can go ahead and pick that up. I don't know if we can zoom in there, but and basically it's telling you like how long you've been holding it and uh, I think where it's attached to. So I can let go. Um, on the controller, this would be, uh, for that specific object, it's triggered a pull or hold on to it and grips to let go. They have this linear drive here, which I think is a really cool feature. So it's just a, a slider and what you can do is that they've tied that to an animation. So you can basically take from 0 to 1 on the scale and apply that to wherever you want it to be in an animation. And I think that's a really cool feature. Same thing with the circular drive. You can just rotate this and then you get a, I believe, a 360 degree uh, rotation value. Or I, th I think that might be a scale value. Let me, let's, let's dive in here. So here we go. Uh, yeah, you get the r rotation out of this. And they, they have this like all set up to events. I think like as an API, all of this stuff is really, really cool. And yeah, then the last thing is like what we saw is the longbow. This is probably the more complicated example, and they've added it here really to show you how you can use their API as a means of not only just doing one-handed interactions, but two hands with 
I pick up one object, I get the arrow, and then I have the arrow interact with fire, and then I shoot them. All of that together gets integrated into the framework, and I think that's really cool. So, yeah, the only really other thing that this thing doesn't actually let you simulate, which is kind of a shame, really, because I think it's the trickiest part about VR, is teleportation. So let me go ahead, pop in VR mode, and I just want to show off the teleportation here. So I have the controller here. You can see it's actually vibrating in my hand right now, and we've got that teleport um, uh, annotation. And this is exactly like the lab. You have these teleport areas that I can go to, and there's also locked areas. I don't... Let me know in the comments if you know if there's any locked areas in the lab. I couldn't think of any, but yeah, you can have locked areas and like locked teleport pads. And behind me, I have a teleportation area, so I can teleport anywhere within this. You get all the graphics for free, which is really cool. And, yeah, I, I mean, it's one of the better teleportation systems for sure. So, that's all there. Let's go ahead now and see how we can customize our own. So, what I'm going to do really quick, and I'm going to cut here for a little bit, is just go ahead and grab the autumn... autumn mountain scene from the asset store and then import that in so i'll see you in a bit gone ahead import that in you can see that it's called free mountain in your directory so let's go ahead close that and i'm just going to go to the the scene that they give you i mean the reason i chose this is it's a pretty big scene and i want to use it to get upon that cross that you can use this for teleportation so they got a bunch of static water in here so there's this kind of flat area and so to really what you basically use what they have we just go to interaction core prefab and there's a player prefab in here i'm just going to drag that onto the floor which is not really the floor because i'm floating way up in space so let's just go drag that onto the floor the other thing we should do just so that we can use the camera preview is delete the original camera and I'm also going to open up the game view here just so we can see. And so we have this player. Let's keep on moving it down to the ground. Unfortunately, the colliders on this do not work. So we it's not going to snap to the ground. So we're going to have to adjust it. That's fine. One thing you'll notice that's different from the camera rig is they don't have the play area box. Which I kind of personally use a lot for maintaining scale. I think you can add that pretty easily if you just go in here and then just say Steam VR play area. That gets you kind of a small area that you can use, and instead of doing calibrate it, you can like say set this to whatever you want. I'm just gonna disable it for now, but that is there as an option if you want it to use for a reference. And I, I kind of like it uh, having it as a reference. So that's that. And then next thing I want to do is just go ahead and add some teleportation in. So Again, super simple, and this is why I really like this. So, we go to prefabs. We need to first import in the uh, teleport prefab. And so, this is I mean, you can see there's so much set up here. It's like audio sources, effects, and like, uh, materials, and colors, and all of that good stuff is set here. You have the arc, all of that set up for you. You don't have to change a thing, and that's really cool. It's its own custom thing that you can use. And basically, once you have this in, it, it'll all automatically just start drawing that arc. And if it doesn't connect with anything, it's just going to draw that red arc that you sometimes see in the lab. So now that we have that, we can just go ahead and start dragging in some teleport points. And so we just move these around. Again, unfortunately, without some proper... I think that it, the mountain not having detections makes it so that our collisions makes it so that we can't actually go ahead and snap these guys onto the terrain, which kind of sucks, but uh, that's fine. So, I mean, we can continue keeping on doing that, but I think three is pretty good for now. So I'm going to go ahead, go to the scene view here, play, and uh, like I said, this 2D debug comes built in. Of course, we can't use that to test teleportation, which I mean, which is what we're doing right now, so this is kind of useless, but uh, if you do need it for interacting with anything, that's a really nice feature that they added. I Props to them for doing that. 
So, go ahead. And I'm not in the VR world. Why am I not in the VR world? Let me go ahead and close that and open again. There we go. Got my controller turned on. There we go. Automatically, because this is part of the player prefab, it already has those annotations for teleport. And I think part of that is also the fact that... Ooh, I put these way too far. Um, part of that is, I think, built into the player prefab and the fact that I have teleportation in here. And so this is a cool thing. I placed my things way too far because looking at a 2D map, I cannot judge distance all that well. This looked, this felt a lot closer than it actually was. So let's just move these guys so that I can actually teleport. And now we hit play. Alright, so there we go. It's, it's barely, barely hittable. But we can hit it. I am floating, but again, because I did not snap it to the ground. But, yeah, I can, I can go ahead. I can teleport to all of them. And if I so wanted, I can also make some of these teleports locked. So I can just click it there, and in theory, one of them, probably the one I'm on. Yeah, so it's that one is now locked now. The coloring, I think, is a little broken, uh, probably because I changed this in play mode, but it works. And that's, <laughs> again, super cool. And yeah, this a super short tutorial, but I think... Just kind of want to get the discussion started on what you can do with this, and I think it's a really cool thing that Valve has enabled, and it's also open source. So, those are all wins in my book, and should hopefully help people get started building content quicker. And cool content, because, I mean, even the teleportation itself, you can even build a bunch of different games around that, and I think that's really cool. So hopefully this is useful, and let me know if you decide to build anything, post in the comments, because I definitely want to see cool stuff that you guys are making. And yeah, that pretty much does it. Make sure to like this video, it helps us out a lot, and subscribe if you haven't. But other than that, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.